Hello everyone, uh, I'm here today to show you how I make a dungeon using the basic dungeon template that I've made available over on my website at sagaborn.com. You can find it by going to sagaborn.com slash store and it's always up in the top area here because it's one of the most popular things that people download off the site. Um, I am using Photoshop CC 2018 and the template is a PSD file with a couple different layers here. Um, if you zoom in a little bit you can see I have a black grid up right now. I also have a white grid and the default template that I have is uh, 24 by 36 which I think is adequate for what we're doing today. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is going to flip this horizontal because that's the dungeon that we're working on. Uh, this is for a uh, demo that I'm running at a convention this weekend where I need an old ruin. I'm going to have uh, map tiles printed out. I've already done a sketch here. Uh, entrance hall. Uh, they're going to run into some bandits. A uh, staircase going up into another room. This is just going to be a quick, like, two and a half hour demo, so it's nothing too crazy. Uh, the first thing to do is we will cut out the first room so we can get our proportions right. I'm thinking that this should probably be like 25 foot, 25 foot by 40 foot. So each grid is five feet. And so I'll cut it out. Besides the grid layers here, which I'm going to go ahead and lock this grid layer so I don't mess with it. We have a couple different layers. We have uh, the top layer, which is just a dark layer that covers everything up that I uh, have a couple filters on or effects on, so that way when I cut it out, it uh, gives it some shadows. Uh, the next layer is the floor layer. You can use any texture you want on that. And depending on the, the map, sometimes I'll have other layers, like if there's water or uh, effects that might go over top of it. So first we'll just start out, make sure we're over here to the left a bit. And I'll cut out 25 by 30, 40, let's do 45. So I just select that, hit delete, and then there we have our first room. The texture I've got, and I have the textures available inside of the map tutorial as well. Um, this is just sort of a gray dirt one. And I actually want a different one since this is a ruin. I want it to have a tiled floor. So I just went over here and clicked on the pattern overlay that was already on the bottom floor. And now I'll just pick, well, it looks like I got lucky. I like that one right there. So immediately we've got a 25 by 45 dungeon room that already looks pretty good. I'm going to switch back to this. So we want a hallway coming in. Click back over the top layer. like that and delete didn't quite get it right it's always good to zoom in I think whenever I delete after delete delete a room twice before I get it right all right so now we got our hallway and they'll be coming in from the side of a mountain, so I'm just going to erase out sort of a more organic space over here. Eraser tool's okay, but actually I found out recently that I like the way the lasso tool works better whenever I'm deleting it. It comes out smoother. It doesn't have some of the little jagged circle spaces that there we go, that looks nice. Let's 
So that'll give the PCs a, a place to start. And uh, I'm going to actually add in another floor uh, layer. Control Shift N. And because I want this to not be tiled out here, so I'm going to go to my brush. I'm going to pick sort of a neutral greenish color. Make that big enough. I'm going to just come in and paint all this. Then I'll come over here to effects and I will do pattern overlay and I will pick a grass that I like. Looks pretty good there. I'm going to like adjust the opacity and the size of it. Now, do I have any stuff that's not quite that bright? That looks better. And then what I'll do is I'll come up and I'll choose a brush that is softer, and shrink it down, come in like that, so that way it looks like it's sort of inching in. And then another neat thing is you can bring the opacity down on the brush and you can sort of make a little bit of grass growing into the dungeon there, which shows that it's been open for a while and you've got some things growing in there. You can even, so this can be like moss too, so I'll just come in. It's at 50%, so just enough to give it some, a little extra punch there. Right, so the next part we're looking at a staircase. It looks like it's almost as long as the as this hallway. So we'll do 10, 20, 30, 40. Now let's come back a bit. I'll go a little bit over and then I'll inch it back. So that way we get it right where we need it to be and make sure you're on the right layer otherwise it doesn't do any good delete so i'm thinking that this will be a staircase and i've done a staircase texture in the past so this will be spread all over here so a lot of my map textures some of them I got from campaign cartographer uh, which they do allow you to do commercial stuff if you buy their program but uh, there's an old site called Dungeony which I got a lot of my stuff from if I don't make it myself and uh, you can just search on the web and find quite a bit of free textures to toss into your into your game. All right, so this is actually a staircase I made a while back. Looks like I might have to double it up to make it fit. Also, I'm going to adjustments and maybe desaturate that so that way it fits a little bit more it's desaturate enough where it's not even changing much all right so we got that we can actually drag that below the top layer there and then just duplicate layer There you go, you got a staircase. I just made this staircase by, uh, I did a layer that had some drop shadow on it, texture of stone, and then I just cut and paste them on top of each other, which just gives you a gradual staircase up. 
I'll pull this back up top to show you. I also had it slowly get bigger so that way it looks like it's actually descending. So if this wasn't in a hallway, you would see that the staircase is getting wider as it goes up. I'm also putting the shadows facing towards like the downwards area, which will give, even though there's nothing there to show people which way is up or down, they're going to get the feeling that that way is up because all the drop shadows are coming from above. All right, so now we got a big room. This actually looks like it's bigger than that one. It's maybe 35 by 35. Let's go one past it. That'll be eight. Eight by eight. All right, and there we have the second room. Let's see, I wanted a passageway off to the top that has some rubble in it. I'll do that by I deleted out that section. Oh. Zoom in, zoom in so that way you can get that right. Then I'm going to use my paintbrush on the top layer, move it back up to 100%. Oh, it would help if I had it the right color and had it where it is not. That's closed off, and I'll add in some rocks later on to give the effect that that area has collapsed. Down here, it looks like a little guard room. I will select it just a little bit over so that way there's a wall between them. That make our doorway. It looks like there's a little closet over here. And I want another hallway coming off of this one. This is going to actually be a an area that they won't be able to go into but I, they will be able to see into it so we'll make it look like that all right so now we've got our basic dungeon set up our startup area first room the second room these areas are deeper in so I'm not going to do the moss uh, it's also up higher I would imagine that the water would sort of sink its way down into here um, but we want to so we give it a, a cool effect. So we'll make another layer. And I will come in with a soft brush at about 50%. Yep, sort of a dark layer and I'll just name it Shadows. And what I'm gonna do with this is might be too much. Let's do it down to 25. I'm just gonna come in and make some variations in color here. Before I replaced my laptop, I actually had a shadow brush that would was very sporadic, and I guess I'm gonna have to remake it now that I've got this new laptop. There we go. So we got just enough to give it some flavor in there. And now we need to start adding our little icons. So I want some pillars in here. I never remember if I have any good ones. Okay, here we go. 
So I'll drag it over. So part of the secret of making fun maps is building up your map database. Like finding those cool objects that can be vegetation or structures. This one looks a little too bright for me, so I'm going to darken it down. Saturation down on it. There we go. Darken it a little bit. And then it's not popping, so I want to add. Let's do a drop shadow. And do the map drop shadow coming from there. Actually, the lighting is going to be coming from the other side of the room. So set up like that. I'm going to have a fire pit over here. Let's do adjustments, brightness, contrast. The contrast of that a bit. All right. Now, of course, I'll be showing this. Well, now I'll be playing this on a normal tabletop so I won't have any of my roll 20 effects that I normally have All right, so we will control C and control V Just copy this over the new lineup tools that are with Photoshop CC it makes stuff like this so much easier oh, this moss effect looks like it's looks like the moss is in front of the pillars so we're going to, have to fix that program error there, not sure why. Oh, looks like I've grabbed the shadows, so let's lock that down. Grab this top layer, pillar, pillar, pillar. Where are these? Now oh, it's just this one pillar is behind the grass for some reason. Got all these in the same space. I'm just gonna rasterize the layers. And merge them so that way it's taking up a little bit less memory. And then we will save this as the ruins. That way I don't get to save it all right and I'm 
going to find some more images and we'll be right back. All right, and we are back. I found the pillar that I am looking for. Drag this over. I wanted one pillar that was broken, fallen down, because I'm going to have some bandits hiding out behind it. So it would actually be. falling down like that. I'm going to give it a drop shadow so that way it matches the rest of the room and Sort of matches everything else. Let's see if we have a campfire I can place in here. Let's see if we have a fires. So I have a section for that. Let's see how this one looks in here. Oh, it's massive. effect that that one has. Needs to be a little bit smaller. That'd actually be a huge fire. And now this, for some of these items I want to actually put it on top of the grid. So we'll still see the grid, but we don't want the grid going through objects that are sort of above the floor. Maybe we'll do that with all of them. We'll pull these pillars up too. There we go. That makes the grid look more like the floor. So we got a the basic room there staircase and then we're going to need a door for up top here so let's see I made a couple different doors in the past let's just do a wooden door This is a big place. Let's do double doors. I just sort of stretch it out till I get the right proportion that I'm looking for. And then I will select it, copy paste, and spin it around. There you go. Got double doors there. I think for this big area back here, I think a single giant metal door. Players always get nervous whenever you pull out the metal doors. So let's make them nervous. front 
when I cut out this map for tabletop play, I'll probably cut it right there so that way they'll just see the front of the door and they won't know what's going on behind there until later. So next we need a table. Because what bandit layer is complete without a table? Here's one. This is definitely one from Dungeony. It's already pre built with some cool stuff on top of it. Drag that up above the grid. And let's flip it around. A lot of these things I find are really saturated. I'm a big fan of darkening things up, make it look a little bit more grungy. And then we will go back and add my favorite drop shadow. Alright, and you know, I'm probably going to do some more touch-ups here and there, but with this, you guys have seen how quickly you can throw together a quick dungeon with this dungeon template that has the grid, has a couple different layers on it, and, you know, once you build up your, your collection of map tiles, you can really make these maps sing. So, uh, if you like what you, what you saw, uh, be sure to like us, comment below, and uh, follow us here and on Facebook. Thanks a lot. Have a good night.